whenever we are constructing high rise buildings that is G plus 2, G plus, G plus 3 definitely the wind pressure is to be taken into consideration. So, when the wind pressure is taken into consideration we have to consider that particular type of a load. Now, in our case uh, four more uh, four important loads that we are going to study first is the dead load and in that particular dead load we are going to study point load, uniformly distributed load, gradually varying load and a couple moment. To start with the word point load. Now, when we talk about a point load, I will take a very simple example. Whenever a human being is standing on a particular place, his whole weight is concentrated on the CG. That is, it is concentrated in the center and that particular center is nothing but the point load. Another simple example is of a column. If we take a RCC column, the sulphate of the RCC column is concentrated and it is in the form of a point load. So, in this particular figure we can see point load in the form of F is equal to 18 kilo newtons or reaction at A and B that is 3 kilo newtons and 15 kilo newtons. Now, we come to a uniformly distributed load. The word itself suggests uniformly distributed load. If I take a simple example of a water tank, the water tank has the base, the water tank has a water, the water is filled up to a height h, the water tank is made up of same material and of same dimensions, same wall thickness. So, on the floor it will exert a same amount of load per meter length. Similarly, if I talk about a wall, the length of the wall is same, height of the wall is same, wall thickness is same and the material of which the wall is made is same. So, if I calculate the load per meter length, the load calculated will be or the load obtained per meter will be same. So, when the load obtained per meter length is uniform, we call it as a uniformly distributed load. Now, this uniformly distributed load is given in terms of kilo newtons per meter. So, if I want to define a uniformly distributed load, we can define uniformly distributed load as the load transferred by a structure uniformly per meter length throughout is called as a uniformly distributed load. Now, if I want to convert this uniformly distributed load in terms of a kilo newton, then we can convert it by multiplying the length. So, if W kilo Newton per meter is the force or a load acting on a structure, then in terms of kilo Newton we will get W kilo Newton per meter multiplied by L meters. So, W into L will be the concentrated load or a point load. Now, this concentrated load or point load will act on the center. So, if L is the length, the center will be L by 2. So, the concentrated load will be W L which will act at a length of L by 2. Now, we come to the third type of load that is uniformly varying load. <coughs> uniformly varying load is basically a load in the form of a triangular shape, is in the form of a triangular shape, is in the form of a triangular shape. We can see over here that load is distributed uniformly, but it is varying linearly from one end to the another. At one end it is maximum which is reducing to a 0 at another end. So, that particular type of a load which is linearly varying from one end to the another is called as a uniformly varying load. Now, for a uniformly varying load we cannot multiply directly this distance because at one end we have got a peak value and at one end another end we have got 0 value. So, we have to take the average of both the loads. So, average of both loads will be 9 plus 0 divided by 2 into the span. So, that will be the concentrated load. In short for students we can just remember that we have to take the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle that is 1 upon 2 base into height. Height will give the intensity of the load, base will give the length of the beam. So, 1 upon 2 into load into 
the intensity that is called as the concentrated load. Now where will this concentrated load act? So this concentrated load will act at the center of the triangle. Center of the triangle is always obtained by the intersection of the medians. So one third from 90 degree that is called as the center and two third from the apex that is called as the center where this concentrated load will act. Now we come to the next topic that is analysis of the beams. What do you basically mean by the term analysis? Analysis means we have to calculate the support reactions when the beam is subjected to forces. So in this particular case when the beam is subjected to transverse load what are the reactions produced at the support that is called as the analysis of the beam. Now this analysis of the beam can be done by using the conditions of equilibri equilibrium that is the static conditions of equilibrium. When the term equilibrium comes what do you mean by the term equilibrium? Equilibrium means the net effect of the forces acting on the structure should be equal to 0. When we talk about the forces we have got horizontal force, we have got vertical force, we have got inclined force. So whatever force is acting on the beam the net effect or the resultant of those forces should be 0. Second is the moment. Now moment is we know moment is what? Force into perpendicular distance. Which perpendicular distance? Distance from the line of action of the force to the point where the moment is to be taken. So basically moment tries to rotate a body. When the rotation takes place we have got two types of movement. One is in the clockwise direction and second is in the anti-clockwise direction. So whenever these three conditions are satisfied, first is algebraic summation of all the horizontal forces, second is algebraic summation of all the vertical forces and third is, third is algebraic sum of the moments. So when all these three conditions are satisfied then we say that our system is in equilibrium. Now when I use the term algebraic, so when the algebraic term is used we have to consider the sign convention. So uh, for the sign conventions the for horizontal forces if the force is moving towards the positive x axis we consider as a positive, if the force is moving towards the vertical axis we consider as negative. Similarly in case of a vertical force if the force is moving in the vertical upper direction we consider as positive and if the force is moving in the vertical downward direction we consider it as negative. And in case of moment if the movement is in the direction of the clock hence we call it as a clockwise movement and it is taken as positive. Similarly if the force tries to rotate the body in the direction opposite to the clock hence we call it as an anti-clockwise movement. So if clockwise movement is equal to anti-clockwise movement so net effect of the forces that will be equal to 0. So when these three conditions are satisfied then we call it as the system to be in equilibrium. So to find out the support reactions we have to satisfy all these three conditions of equilibrium. So now what are the steps to calculate the support reactions? The first step is we have to draw a free body diagram. Now what is a free body diagram? The word free itself suggests that we have to make the body totally free from all the constraints. Now constraints means what? Constraints means if we are having a body fixed in a particular column or a wall then that is particular constraint. So I have to make it free from that particular constraint. Second is I have to draw the outline of this particular body. So we have to draw the outline of that particular body. Third is whatever forces are acting on the body. In present case what is the force acting on the body? Nothing but the self weight of the body. So we have to show the self weight of the body. And because of that particular body what are the forces developed that we have to show. So in all we have to show internal forces, we have to show external forces and what will be the inclination of those forces that is to be shown. So that particular diagram is called as a free body diagram. 
So, free body diagram is nothing but a diagram which is showing the physical condition of a body that is what are the forces acting and what is the inclination of that particular force. The second step is we have to apply the three conditions of equilibrium. We have already discussed what are the three conditions of equilibrium. First is sigma h is equal to 0, second is sigma v is equal to 0 and third is sigma moment is equal to 0. And the last step is we can obtain the support reactions. Now, one more important thing is that when we have got a hinge support, as we have already discussed in the hinge support, we have got two reactions. One is horizontal reaction and one is vertical reaction. So, whenever we have got two reactions, we have to calculate the value of the resultant. So, that resultant value is obtained by using our uh, method of resolution that is resultant R is equal to under root of sigma h square plus sigma v square that will give you the single resultant force value. Now, at what particular angle this particular resultant force is acting that is also to be found out. So, that can be found out by using our formula 10 alpha is equal to sigma v upon sigma h. So, in this way we can find out the values of support reactions. Now, you can see this particular figure, right? What does this particular figure show? This particular figure shows that we have got a steel beam and on this particular steel beam, uh, it is uh, used to support a roof joist. So, how can we find out the support reactions? So, you can see that I have drawn a free body diagram. Free body diagram is first is I have drawn a beam. I have made it free from the constraints. What are the constraints? One is the support and second is the wall. So, make it uh, free from the constraints. So, we have just drawn the outer line. Then we are showing that on the support there will be two reactions and those reactions will be opposite to the direction of the motion of a beam. So, forces are acting in the vertical downward direction. So, definitely the reactions will be in the vertical upper direction and where they will be at the supports. So, the second diagram shows F as a force and at A and B the reactions. So, we can find out the reactions by applying the conditions of equilibrium that we are going to find out in our second session. Uh, before uh, ending the ses uh, second session, I will just throw a light on statically determinant and statically indeterminant beams. As discussed previously, uh, statically determinant beams are basically the beams which uh, try to satisfy the conditions of equilibrium. That is, we can find out the unknowns with the help of the equations. So, I have got three equations, the first equation sigma h, the second equation sigma v and third equation sigma m. So, I can find out maximum three unknowns. So, when I can find out maximum three unknowns, then that particular type of a beam is called as a statically determinant beam. Very simple example is our simply supported beam. We can see over here in a simply supported beam, uh, for a simply supported beam, we have got one as hinge support. In the hinge support, we have got two reactions and second is a roller support. In the roller support, we have got one reaction. So, total how many unknowns are there? We have got three unknowns. Now, to find out these three unknowns, I can use my statically uh, equilibrium uh, equations sigma h, sigma v and sigma moment. So, three unknowns and three equations. This is called as statically determinant reactions or beams. If I go to another that is statically indeterminate beams. So, we come to this particular diagram. In this particular diagram, how many unknowns are there? First is the fixed support. So, for a fixed support, we will have three reactions. Second is roller. So, one more reaction. So, 3 plus 1, 4 and third support that is hinge support. So, two more reactions. In all, I have got how many unknowns? 3 plus 1 plus 2. That is 3 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 2, 6 unknowns. Now, when I have got 6 unknowns, but how many equations I have got? I have got only 3 equations to find out 
six unknowns. So, it is not possible and then therefore, that particular type of a beam is called as statically indeterminate beams. So, I now end my session with this particular topic. In the next topic or in the next session, we are going to calculate the support reactions. Thank you. I hope you have followed or understood what I have taught and uh, if there are any queries, you can definitely approach me at my mail id ruchi shri 111 at the rate gmail.com. Thank you so much.